Now there are different types of uh, columns that we can use, so different types of resins that we can pack into columns, I should say, uh, depending on uh, what physical property we want to separate the proteins by. So one, the, the first one we'll look at is called hydrophobic interaction chromatography. And so the beads, these solid supports, are uh, functionalized with nonpolar groups uh, in this case, such as uh, phenyl or octal or uh, butyl uh, side chains. And so these are nonpolar, remember. And what this, the principle of this is very similar to salting out. So remember, as we salt out, as we increase the salt concentration, uh, we start to get precipitation. And that precipitation is because uh, hydrophobic patches uh, on the protein are interacting with each other and uh, causing aggregates, and then that's dropping out of solution. Okay, so this is a similar idea, except instead of allowing the hydrophobic patches uh, to interact with each other between proteins, uh, instead the hydrophobic patch of the protein interacts with the nonpolar residues of the beads. So these proteins, instead of aggregating, they bind to here. Now if we have a mixture of proteins, for instance, we can bind several types of the proteins within the mixture on these beads simultaneously. Now remember that when, these pro when this hydrophobic effect really occurs uh, is going to be dependent on the number of charges, uh, the number of hydrophobic residues uh, on the, uh, in the protein. And that, uh, that means that different proteins uh, can be differentiated uh, based on these properties. Now, what we do, remember this, this, this precipitation occurs at high salt. So in practice, what happens is, if this is our chromatogram, this is time, and this is uh, absorbance, what we do is we start the mobile phase uh, for this column has high concentration of ammonium sulfate. Okay? Because again, that increases the hydrophobic, uh, the hydrophobic effect, which uh, causes these proteins to interact with the, uh, with the uh, nonpolar uh, functionalization of these beads. And so if this is our salt concentration here, What we do is we load the protein onto the column and then we drop, start dropping the concentration of the ammonium sulfate to zero. Oh wow, stoichiometry is important, remember that. All right. So this is decreasing as we increase time, okay? And so that means that, let's say, the, uh, the blue protein doesn't, uh, doesn't bind as well to these nonpolar groups. So what you might expect in this is that higher, at a higher salt concentration, it'll release first because it's not really bound very tightly uh, to these, uh, to these, these uh, phenyl cephalo speeds. But if this red protein is really uh, bound very tightly uh, to the column, uh, to the beads on the column, then it's going to take more time. It's not going to loot until maybe all the salt is gone. But in effect, what you get is you get separation of the two proteins uh, that you can tell uh, from the chromatogram by the two different peaks.